today on X Play. Get ready for the best of the best in our one hour special the top 10 games ever God of War, Halo 2, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 12, Gears of War. We're counting down to our number one game Grand Theft Auto, Half Life 2. Guitar Hero, Burnout 3, and more. Who will come out on top as our number one game? Prepare yourself for the best of the best. It's game time. Prepare to be reviewed. Adam Sessler. Morgan Webb. to be reviewed. This is X-Play. Hello and welcome to X-Play's Top 10 Games Ever, presented by Subway. On today's show, we're counting down the very best games we've reviewed since X-Play began. From Liberty City to Tamriel, we're going to show you the games that got it right and let you know which games came close but just didn't make the cut. So sit back, relax, and prepare to get drunk on the quality of video gaming we've got to offer. There's not chance. No, no mediocrity. Today's show is pure, uncut, great gaming. Yes, now we start out at number 10. Number 10, Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal. Well, Ratchet and Clank as a series has always been regarded for its controls, level design, and inventiveness. It's the third installment, Up Your Arsenal, that refined those elements into an action platforming masterpiece. The story remains silly, but it's the best excuse to string together a series of levels designed so impeccably it's nearly impossible to stop midway. A sense of fun and inventiveness permeates each new challenge. So while you primarily blast away at anything and everything, it never stops feeling fresh. What complements this is the compulsive addition of slight RPG elements. The more you destroy, the more your health bar increases. The more you use a weapon, the more powerful it becomes. As a result, it's almost impossible not to take on the side challenges the game offers just to see what overpowerful awesomeness awaits. Hey, Sarge, you can have my gun. And how you use those weapons becomes so central in the third installment. The enemy AI in battle scenarios create enough of a challenge that you must pre-plan and use the weapon variety wisely. And the result is pure satisfaction. Throw in arena battles, some inspired side-scrolling platforming action, and top-notch voice acting. Huh? And you have the high-water mark for the genre. Until the next one. The new title, Ratchet and Clank Future, Tools of Destruction, is expected out this fall, and we can only hope that Insomniac brings the same level of platforming shooter action to the PS3. I think they will. But not every innovative game is perfect. We've seen quite a few that were great, impressive games, but didn't quite merit that 5 out of 5. To give these games their fair share of attention, here's our tribute to our favorite fours. X-Play's Favorite Fours. Sometimes, we just can't give a game a five, even if it's good, really, really good. That's stupid. I know. With that in mind, we'd like to present our favorite games that got a four out of five. Katamari Damashi. Yes, we know it's hard to believe, but Katamari Damashi didn't garner a perfect score. We initially complained that the game was too short and the visuals were simplistic. But the rest of the game's attributes easily make up for this. To this day, Katamari features one of the best soundtracks of all time. There's even a storyline to tie it together. The action begins when the King of the Cosmos goes on a bender and smashes up half the galaxy. Somehow, it's up to you, the Prince, to wad up giant balls of junk into new stars. Yep, that never gets old. From the twisted mind of Tim Schafer comes Psychonauts, a game that lets you attend a whacked out summer camp for the mentally, uh, gifted. In other words, Psychonauts! Yes, Psychonauts. 
Don't you train psychonauts here? The only reason this one didn't get a five is because the platforming can be a bit tedious at times. But we highly recommend this game for its laugh out loud script. And and then you'll make their heads explode? No. Do you do that? No. Well, once kinda. Next on the list is, wait, Shadow of the Freaking Colossus didn't get a five? Man, what the hell does a game have to do to get a five around here? Let's see. According to our old review, our complaint was that the limited PS2 horsepower wasn't able to keep pace with the outlandish visuals in the game. Well, in retrospect, Shadow is an amazing work of art. That's right, we said it, it's a work of art. And although we would never apologize for a review, I need you to read between the lines here. Uh, how do I phrase this? We were maybe possibly, potentially, conceivably sort of kind of too harsh in our criticism. There. Happy now? Yeah, sometimes games you wouldn't expect end up aging really well in comparison to other ones that were so very good at the time. Glossi, we hope you can forgive us. It's a rare and special occasion when we give a game a 5 out of 5, and in picking the 10 best, some of the finest games out there came close but didn't make the cut. So we thought we'd spotlight some honorable mentions. Honorable mention, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Once you get four games into a series, you kind of expect that the quality might be starting to fade. Not so with The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, which, while far superior to any previous Elder Scrolls game, barely doesn't make our top ten list. In this, possibly the most open-ended of open-ended games, you start off as an anonymous prisoner and go from there to, well, it's really up to you. Sure, there's a story about an assassinated king and gates to the dimension of oblivion, but if you want to spend your time meeting new people or taking in the view or riding pretty horses, well, that's just fine too. There's so much detail here, it's easy to get sidetracked and completely forget that the entire empire of Cyrodiil is depending on you. There are still people trapped in there. With so many potential hours of gameplay, you start to get a second sense for what you're supposed to do to advance the story. Plus, there aren't any real rewards for clearing dungeons other than maxing out, say, your heavy armor skill. And that's the kind of goal that earns The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion a spot just below our top 10 games. Basically, that means you're not getting in. There's just nothing quite as fun as closing Oblivion gates, except for the rest of the game. Coming up, Grand Theft Auto, God of War, and Resident Evil 4. The countdown of the top 10 games ever continues when we return. Hi, my name is Josh. I'm from Louisville. My top three favorite games, well, number one would be Kingdom Hearts. Number two, and I've got Kingdom Hearts 2. Number three, you know, I have to say the new Madden, Madden No. 7. Catch you later. Hello and welcome back to X Play's Top 10 Games Ever. Now, coming up right after tonight's show is an all-new episode of Code Monkeys, and we've got a preview later in our show. But right now, the countdown rolls on. Here's number nine. Number nine, Guitar Hero. Ah, now this is rock. This is roll. And this is Guitar Hero. Not since Journey Escape to the Atari 2600 has a video game rocked this hard. And there's no wimpy open arms anywhere in this the wall rockathon. Just pick a guitar, pick a tune, and raise your golden goblets to the power, the passion, and the majesty of rock. We all love rock and roll, and Guitar Hero couldn't be more perfect to unleash our inner Dio. So many anthems. So many riffs. So much rock. Guitar Hero started its worldwide tour back in the simpler days of 2005. And it took off like a spider from Mars. And it's addicting, real addicting. And when you're trying to be a rock star, what's more crucial to the rock than addiction? Plus, where else can you jam to a helmet song? It doesn't get much better than that. 
Raise your lighters if you're old or your cell phones if you're young for Guitar Hero. I can't wait for the encore. It's such a simple game, but it really does make you feel like a golden god of rock. And the potential to rock is only going to get better with the 80s edition they're releasing later this year. Okay, we thought you guys might like some opinions other than our own. So we asked some of the more intense gaming fans here at G4 to give us their picks. Morgan's over with Blair Butler to find out her favorites. Thanks, Adam. Okay, now tell me, Blair, your three favorite games of all time. All right, I know everyone thinks I'm going to say Gears of War, Dead Rising, but number three is okay. Katamari Damashi. It's got a very simple, great gameplay. It yeah. was cheap, and it's fun for everyone to play. Good for all ages. Yes. Number, okay, number, number two. two. Ninja Gaiden Black. Mm -hmm. uh, they fixed the camera angles. It was so much fun. That first boss was so hard that if yeah. you actually beat the game, you felt like a rock star. Okay, number one. Number one, clearly Resident Evil 4. Zombies, best third person shooter ever, yeah. end of story. Best oh. game ever. Best game ever, says yeah. Blair. <laughs> All right. Definitely. That is our Blair all grown up playing those zombie games. And when we were formulating the list of the best games ever, a few franchises came up that have included some great games, but which didn't quite make the list. So here's another honorable mention tribute. Honorable mention, the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Before Sam Fisher ever cowered in a corner, before Agent 47 ever switched sports coats, there was Solid Snake. 20 years ago, Snake appeared in a... Oh, my real name is David. Dave appeared in a sneaky little NES game called Metal Gear. If he'd known how many times he'd find himself on a mission to stop a Metal Gear mech from launching its nukes, only to be betrayed by his superiors, he may have retired. Lucky for us, Dave and some of his most memorable enemies are genetically predisposed to fight, so there was no shortage of sequel and spin-off material. In 1998, the release of Metal Gear Solid brought the series into three dimensions. The game introduced everything that we've come to expect of the stealth-based series. Bizarre bosses, lovely ladies, mullets, and drama, drama, drama. Meryl was my daughter. I got a letter from her mother, my dead brother's wife. The constant vacations to crazy land that the Metal Gear series takes keeps it from a spot on our hallowed top 10 list, but the games are just plain fun. The next chapter of the saga of Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots will most likely drop in early 2008, and we will be there to guide Solid Snake through the web. And my real name is David. To guide Solid Snake through the... And my real name is David. Solid Dave. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. David. In our eighth spot is a sequel to the first truly great console shooter. It managed to make a number of small improvements on the original, but still maintained the simplicity that made the first game great. Here's number eight. Number eight, Halo 2. Microsoft's resident walking nuke slides into the number eight slot. Tell that to the Covenant. Halo 2 is the most successful first-person shooter of all time, and with good reason. Halo 2 offers unparalleled action in gaming's equivalent to a triple-A Hollywood blockbuster. See this look? It's terror! Fast, visceral combat, compelling characters, and a wide array of weapons, including the almighty plasma sword. Halo 2 expanded the story's canvas by putting gamers in the jackboots of Master Chief's Covenant counterpart, the Arbiter. Beautifully designed with a science fiction world seamlessly blended into an older mythology, the world of Halo feels like it has a life of its own. You take out the Prophet. He's given us all the intel we need. While the single player is fantastic, the thing that makes Halo 2 truly worthy of the best of list is the multiplayer. Halo 2 offers quite possibly the best matchmaking software on the planet. Battle-hearted veterans and novices alike find a perfectly balanced arena of gameplay that surpasses a mere multiplayer mode and more closely resembles a full-fledged sport. If you want to bust some heads online or offline, Master Chief is ready to oblige. A new pair of underpants is not included. 
If you'd like to see the original of any of these games, come on over to g4tv.com slash xplay. There you can find videos of all our reviews. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for our podcast at g4tv.com slash podcast. Or you can always sign up for our podcast at iTunes. And for the latest news, here's the gaming update with Joel Gordine. Thanks, Morgan. Welcome back to X-Play's Top 10 Games Ever. We're looking at the finest games we've reviewed since X-Play hit the cable box. Next up is the number seven spot with the most successful massively multiplayer online role-playing game in history. Number seven, World of Warcraft. Power leveling its way into the number seven slot is World of Warcraft. The world's most successful MMORPG is so good and addictive that it's either ruined or improved the social lives of many of its 8.5 million subscribers. Let's just say a majority of Azeroth's inhabitants have spent at least 20 full days to get their first character to 60. And with the recent Burning Crusade expansion, the amount of time spent playing has equated to months. No other MMO has achieved the amount of success like World of Warcraft has. And the reason for its success is a user-friendly interface and the game's ability to evolve without losing its balance. In the span of two years, the world of Azeroth has gone through more changes and updates than Michael Jackson's nose. In Warcraft's case, the changes never scared anyone away. Featuring profound gameplay alongside the ability to create a detailed digital doppelganger makes this one of the most diverse and versatile games in all aspects. The various ways of spending countless hours in Azeroth also diversifies the addiction, from grinding Nagas and quests to ganking dubs and PvP to spending six hours in a 40-man raid just to fight a giant lady dragon and to wipe out twice. To think, all these hours spent just get an epic pair of pants. World of Warcraft took the MMO genre and brought it to a whole new level. Whether you're questing, dancing, or just a sucker for elf ears, there is always something to do in Azeroth. That's why it's our lucky number seven pick. Just don't forget, there's a world outside of Warcraft. I never thought getting a pair of epic pants could be so exhilarating. <laughs> Next up, we've got an honorable mention for a franchise we may mock, but we love. Here's a tribute to the Final Fantasy series. Honorable mention, Final Fantasy. We've had a love-hate relationship with Final Fantasy over the years, mostly hate. But a couple of recent releases starring Chocobos scored fives on X-Play. They didn't actually make the top ten, but they're both great games and definitely worth their weight in Gil. You know your stuff. Final Fantasy VI came out with a superb re-release on the Game Boy Advance, and it reminded us how much modern role-playing games owe this installment. But if 16-bit graphics hurt your eyes, last year's Final Fantasy XII might just be what the doctor ordered. I'm glad. Virtually every bit of the latest installment has been redesigned from the ground up. Like Part 6, this one features a sprawling storyline that's heavy on political intrigue. And as if that weren't enough, Part 12 features sexy bunny ladies. Whoa. But unfortunately, neither are quite good enough to crack the top 10. Like many things in life, the refined intricacy of Final Fantasy is an acquired taste. A really acquired taste. Sure, they're great role-playing games, but the thing that keeps us coming back is always the pointy, pointy hair. My three favorite games is probably Chrono Trigger is one, Ultima 4, although Jumpman from uh. Ep Epic's Game. Coming up, Gears of War, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Half-Life 2, and Grand Theft Auto, as we count down the top 10 games ever on X-Play. Welcome back to X Play as we count down the 10 best games we've ever reviewed so far. Coming in at number 10, we had Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. At number 9, Guitar Hero. At number 8, Halo 2. At number 7, World of Warcraft. And now here's number 6. Number 6, Burnout 3, Takedown. 3, 2, 1, Takedown. What do you get when you pop the hood on a racing game and chrome just about every part in it? How about some vain vibrating velocity? 
How about gut felt impacts jamming volumes of visceral stimulus straight into your optic ditches? How about an upgraded ability to turn yourself into a weapon of vehicular mass destruction? Burnout 3 Takedown became king of the big racing cats when it was originally released. It reinvigorated both itself and the genre. With inspired modes of play, timed races were complemented by takedown mode. Takedown was like giving a bumper car a hit of ecstasy. Give me a hug. With a new, more muscular physics engine, crash mode becomes an unopposed war cry, striking fear in the hearts of tuk-tuks everywhere. As the shadow of your vehicle fell over a herd of unsuspecting vehicles, an array of score and spectacle-improving power-ups now awaited your skilled ignition. Burnout Takedown's impact time allowed you to slow down and gaze at your twisted metal flower blooming into bits of beautiful chaos. It also gave you an opportunity to after-touch your metallic missile into oncoming adversaries. One should never die alone. Burnout Takedown plied its excellence within a world congested by cars, not people, making its subconscious pleasure a victimless crime. What so proudly we hail by the wreck's fiery light, paradise now. Back in the fall of 2004, two sequels to successful shooters came out that were as impressive as they were distinctive. Now we've already seen Halo 2, and here's the other coming in at number five. Number five, Half-Life 2. Number five on our list, Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman? Gordon Freeman. Dr. Freeman, I presume. Half-Life 2 is an aria of urban violence. Orwellian societal fears. Oh, I thought you were cops. Compelling character development and insane sci-fi action. Half-Life 2 sports fantastic graphics and the developers added a level of detail that makes City 17 feel truly oppressive. <laughs> Clocking in at about 10 hours, Half-Life 2 never overstays its welcome in any one type of gameplay. From the indoor firefights, to taking a road trip with the fam, to the horror of Ravenholm, to the epic city warfare of the Resistance, Half-Life 2 has it all. Like when you fight an alien occupation in real life, there are no cutscenes. I had to put on a show for the cameras. Half-Life 2 creates one of the most immersive experiences around by guiding you along the story path with a gentle, intuitive hand. Stop that. Did I say gentle, intuitive hand? I meant to say lots and lots of explosions. <laughs> the action is fast and furious, with no Vin Diesel in sight. Impeccable physics and a vast array of things that go boom. The gravity gun is one of gamingdom's most original weapons. I think I need a new pair of tidy whites. No game creates living, breathing characters like Val. You believe your friends really care about each other, even if it's a girl and her two-ton robot pet. A doggy. Half-Life 2 satiates the ravenous hunger that burns in every gamer's heart. How do you crack the fifth place spot? Rebel against your alien overlords. Take down the man and have a great time doing it. Remember when we asked Blair what her favorite game was? Well, Adam's doing that thing again with X Plays newsman Joel Gordine. Well, thank you, Morgan. So, Joel, what are your top three? I'm going to go with Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in the third slot. Contra Shattered Soldier, second, okay. Guitar Hero. First. Okay, well, Guitar Hero's already on our list. We know why that one's great. Oh, obviously. Why are you picking the other two? Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, 50 characters, and I can have a team with, like, 15-foot-tall demon, girl who slays zombies, and a Lego man. It's the Rainbow Ooh. Coalition of Superheroes. It is. Yeah. It is. And I want to kill people with a Lego man. Two, Contra Shattered Soldier, update of a classic, and a total test of skill. Like, you cannot pass the game unless you're getting S rankings on every level. I, it, it was definitely a difficult game, and I, yes, I think sometimes I thought it was the game, and sometimes it was me. All right, well, Joel, thank you so much. Absolutely. And before we head on to the fourth best game, I thought we'd give a shout out to yet another game that we love, but didn't quite make the cut. Here's Super Smash Brothers. Honorable mention, Super Smash Brothers Melee. This is probably the most fun you'll ever have starting a fight at a party. Super Smash Bros. Melee skyrocketed to the top of the GameCube charts from the very beginning and hasn't looked back ever since. Flinging fireballs, swinging swords, fluffy pink annihilation. 
I mean, in what other game do you find guys playing as princesses? Easy to pick up and fun to play. Up to four friends, party goers, hell, even complete strangers. Wage a soft centered combat against a virtual who's who of Nintendo royalty. But let's face it, the game's about as shallow as Paris Hilton in a kiddie pool. And without that party to your back, Solo Melee just fails to live up to the excitement of the chaotic multiplayer combat. We love you, Mario, but we just need a little more out of a game to make it to the top of our list. As we look at these games, we've got to remember that not all old games are classics. And when you need to get rid of old games, consoles, or other electronic waste, you've got to do it right. So come on over to gcycle.org and learn how to get rid of your electronic waste responsibly. I'm Ken Levine. I'm the creative director of Irrational Games and uh, the guy running the Bioshock project. Favorite games of all time? I gotta say XCOM. I gotta say, boringly enough, World of Warcraft. And I gotta say, less boringly, Dark Cloud on the PS2. Dark Cloud 2 on the PS2. When we continue, Grand Theft Auto, The Legend of Zelda, Okami and God of War as we count down X-Play's top 10 games ever. Welcome back to X-Play. Today, we're counting down the 10 best games we've ever reviewed. We've worked our way down to number four. Number four, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. When it comes to a series like Zelda, it's tough to pick which one was our favorite installment. They're all that freaking good. But if you twist our arm, we'd have to go with The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Let's face it, this is a super-sized love letter to the fans that has everything you could ever want in a Zelda game. Intense fights on horseback, brain-teasing puzzles, and of course, chicken harassment. Wow, excellent wing strength. Have you been working out? Did we mention that you can play as a wolf? Well, you can. You can play as a wolf. Not enough reasons? Well, it doesn't hurt that the game features some of the most memorable boss fights of the series. But the best part is the way Twilight Princess takes established characters like Link and Zelda and puts them in a dark PG-13 atmosphere. Ooh, Dark Link is creepy. Plus, it's easily the longest game in the series. Seriously, this thing just keeps going and going and going. If we had one tiny nitpick, it would be the uneven character design. Ugh, are those supposed to be kids? They look like demon puppets. But that's a small complaint. We're happy to report that The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is our choice for number four game of all time. In assembling a list of the best games we've reviewed, we had to leave off some real sentimental favorites. The next one hurts me most of all. Here's Okami. Honorable mention, Okami. In real life, I can't get my mom to call me back. In Akami, I run and flowers bloom in my wake. In real life, I can barely draw a stick figure. In Akami, I paint the flowers onto the trees. Without me, the world is darkness and I am the source of everything good. You can't help but love the enchanting and often surprising journey that is Akami. A hundred hours of joy, quirky characters, and magical moments all add to this divine dog's appeal. The fighting system is real time, meaning even though you're fighting with a paintbrush, the action never stagnates. Okay, sometimes the bug can go on a bit too long. And you have to fight the same boss three times. And who am I kidding? It's Zelda in wolf's clothing. Okami captured our hearts, but it won't capture a spot on our top 10 list. You never realized a game about calligraphy and magical goddess dogs could be that good. Hi, this is Reggie Fisame, President and Chief Operating Officer for Nintendo of America. And my favorite games of all time are Zelda, Link to the Past, and Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, and Brain Age 2. In a moment, our countdown continues with the big three, which will make the cut. God of War, 
Grand Theft Auto, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Find out on X-Play. Welcome back to x Place Top 10 Games Ever, presented by Subway. We're counting down the best games we've ever reviewed, and we finally hit Flavor Country. <laughs> Here's number three. Number three, God of War. Is there really anything left to say about God of War? You again? Here's an original title that came out of nowhere to join the pantheon of video game classics. It's not for the faint of heart. This is an Action Heroes action game. Thanks to the winning combination of ass-kicking, throat-stabbing, gorgon-decapitating ultraviolence, it's rightfully secured the third place on our list. Your final lesson is a the collection of Beyond Behemoth boss battles reset the bar for every action game to come out since. On top of that, God of War features a well-written storyline that's told with mature, beautifully rendered cutscenes. And it's refreshing to play a game with well-directed voice acting. Athens needs you. The gratuitous nudity doesn't hurt either, nor does the bumping, grinding minigame. Wait, Kratos looks sad. What's wrong, buddy? The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Aw, oh, that sucked. Hey, how many years in a decade? Ten years! What did you think of the Sopranos finale? I didn't want them to die. Yeah, that was a stupid joke. Sorry, we were just trying to kill time. You succeeded. We've sung the praises of God of War a lot over the years, but this is a game that truly deserves the hype. Here's to you, kid. Here's to you. The mortal who had become the new God of War. As we head into the top two games in the history of X-Play, we have to give a special shout out to a franchise that revolutionized gaming, but didn't quite make the cut for this list. Here's our honorable mention for the Grand Theft Auto series. Honorable mention, the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Missing the cut by a hair trigger is one of the best sellingest, card jackingest, butt kickingest, pimp daddyest, stuff explodingest games of the last few years. I'm of course talking about the Grand Theft Auto 3 series, Rockstar's genre-defining mayhem simulator that's as good at creating controversy as it is innovative gameplay. You a real professional, baby. GTA 3's open-ended sandbox style of gameplay has been copied repeatedly, but never with the same style and humor. Hell no, Officer Tampenny. I was just wondering what took y'all so long. From the original confines of Liberty City to the sun-splashed world of Vice City to the wide expanses of San Andreas, GTA 3's Anything Goes concept has always been backed up by clever and funny writing voiced by the occasional major movie star. It's when the giant shark comes in and just bites their off. But it's the freedom that makes GTA so much fun. The freedom to run down pedestrians, flamethrower cops, and just generally go nuts is something no other game before it has ever done. So why is it not in the top 10? Despite all that innovation and the sheer variety of things to do, I feel like getting my hair cut right now. Missions can often frustrate, and you couldn't even swim till the third game. Sure, each iteration broke the mold and impressed the baggy pants off us, but we're putting our money on GTA 4 to be the true king of the streets when it comes out this fall. And now, coming in at number two, possibly the best Star Wars game and role-playing game of all time. Number two. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I know, I know. We're this close to the top spot on the countdown, and we pull out not just an RPG, but a Star Wars game. Settle down, and let me tell you about a game of old and the Republic for which it stood. There is no escape for us. Set 4,000 years before the Star Wars movies, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is an RPG from Bioware. You play an amnesiac fledgling Jedi on a crash course to learn the ways of the Force before you confront Darth Malak, the baddest Sith in a galaxy up to here with Sith. Why have you disturbed me? At the time of KOTOR's release, there had never really been a game like it on a console. It took the strategic planning, intelligent writing, and pseudo real-time combat often seen in PC games and applied it to a license that desperately needed a shot in the arm. 
By removing the story from the era of the films, KOTOR gives you a wide open playground to explore, with just enough familiarity to keep it feeling Star Warsian. You build a lightsaber, learn new abilities, and choose to walk either the light or dark path through your actions. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. Perhaps the greatest yet hardest to define element of the game is the way it embodies the concept of the Jedi as old than Kenobi originally described them. The guardians of peace and justice, sort of like intergalactic sheriffs. There's a purity to KOTOR's depiction of the Star Wars universe that has yet to be matched in any medium. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic sits proudly as the number two game of all time. This is the destiny of the Jedi. To provide further perspective on our list of the best games of all time, Kevin Pereira is over with Morgan to let us know what his favorite games of all time are. Thanks, Adam. So, Kevin, what do you got for us? All right, I'm going to cop out and say uh, number three is all the old LucasArts adventure games like uh, Full Throttle, Day of the Tentacle, Sam and Max. I'm putting that all in one because I can. It's my childhood. Don't rob me of it. Okay, now, um, that, now that you're cheating. No, no, two was Guitar Hero because <laughs> okay. it was such an experience that, you know, anytime you can get my dad off the couch, it's a good thing. He needs yes. it. Number one, though, best game of all time, Quake for the PC. Okay, why? Because Quake did for online gaming what Pong did for offline gaming. The fact that you had full online TCP IP Windows play, clans support Quake World, Team Fortress, the add-ons, GL Quake. I mean, it, so much came out of that one game that it really set the tone and the pace for years and years to come. Now, thanks for joining us, Kevin, and we have a lot more when we come back. My name is Jean Okubo from uh, Namco Bandai Games. Uh, my three favorite games are Tekken, Ace Combat, and of course, Soul Calibur. It all comes down to this. Coming up, find out who's on top as X-Play reveals the number one game we've ever reviewed. I'm here to tell you my top three favorite games. So my first one is World of Warcraft. My next favorite game is... Uh, Half-Life 2, my next favorite game has to be Natural Selection. All right, thanks. Thanks for your time. Welcome back to X-Play. As promised, we've got a clip from tonight's all-new episode of Code Monkeys. In case you haven't seen it, Code Monkeys is G4's new animated series from the creator of Minority Team and one of the twisted minds behind Crank Anchors. Think Office Space meets South Park meets Pitfall. Who could ask for anything more, right? Now make sure you don't miss the next all-new episode airing next, right after X-Play. For exclusive content and to get to know the characters, check out g4tv.com slash codemonkeys. And before we give you the number one game we've ever reviewed, we have to hand out one more honorable mention. Here's our tribute to Gears of War. Honorable mention, Gears of War. A big monster. Too bad you'll never see it again. Gears of War is the shot of rhino steroid fans of the shooter genre were waiting for, and that's just the single player. Multiplayer changed the new poning formula just enough to create an exciting new dynamic in online death matches. Plus the head stomping. Oh, the head stomping. So why isn't this on our top 10 list? It's kind of only half a game. Remember that monster from 30 seconds ago? It never reappears. So many threads are left hanging, and this game is clearly only a skirmish. And we're left waiting to fight the war. I can't wait till Cliffy B gets us the second half of this game next year. That was fun. Well, you guys have asked us a thousand times, and now we're finally going to tell you what we think the best game we ever reviewed is. Number one. Resident Evil 4. If you have ever seen an episode of X-Play, you most likely know that we love Resident Evil 4. Really love it. Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here. What was essentially an archaic and broken relic of a control scheme was upgraded into a visceral and gripping action experience. As soon as the game starts, an entire village of Spanish psychos are trying to kill you. Why these people? And from the moment we saw this chainsaw-wielding maniac, we knew this game was something special because the X-Play team had collectively crapped its pants. Ah, uh, a little rough, don't you think? 
The gameplay never gets old, as one minute you'll be gunning down satanic monks, and the next you'll be running from a giant stone midget that's trying to crush you. Don't ask, because the story is, well... Oh, shit. I must have dropped it when I was running away from them. But really, who cares if the dialogue isn't great? So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? It's the gameplay we're interested in. Even after you've beaten the game, you'll be coming back again and again. Whether it's just to see the president's daughter degrade herself... How rude! Or, if you've got the PS2 version, you can play the Assignment Ada side mission. With this much perfection wrapped up into one game, it's no wonder this game is best of the X-Play best. Very cute. For more of the best games around, be sure to watch X-Play on Wednesday, August 8th for this year's G4EA Awards. Make your voice heard. Head over to G4TV.com slash G4EA right now to vote on your favorite games. And stick around because coming up next is another all-